Jawaharlal Nehru Planetarium Bengaluru welcomes you to demonstrations in astronomy. Most of us believe that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west on all the days. But if you take photographs of the rising sun with the same background throughout the year, then you can actually make out that the sun doesn't quite rises in the same point every day. The sunrise point gradually shifts towards north for some time, reaches a northernmost point and then starts shifting towards south. So there is this north-south motion of the sun. Why should the sun be shifting its rising and setting points throughout the year and by what angle does the sun shift in this rising point? Now, with the help of this model, let us try to understand that. So here in this model, this is our earth and there are two big circles here. Now let us see what those circles are actually. Now we all know that the earth goes around the sun. It revolves around the sun. As the earth revolves around the sun, we feel that the sun itself is moving from one constellation to another. In fact, we feel that the sun itself is actually moving in a path and this path of the sun is called as ecliptic. In reality, this is actually the orbital plane of the earth. So that ecliptic is represented by this circle. Okay? There is one more circle here. What is that? As you can see here, this is the earth's equator. If you just stretch that or if you just extend that to the celestial sphere, we get this great circle. This is called celestial equator. And as you can see, these two great circles are intersecting and they are making an angle here. What will be that angle? To understand that, we should pay attention to the Earth's rotational axis. As we all know, that the axis of the Earth's rotation is not actually perpendicular to the orbital plane, but it is tilted by something like 23 and a half degrees. As a result, the Earth's equator will be actually making an angle of 23 degrees with the orbital plane. And now we have actually extended the same Earth's equator to the celestial sphere and we have obtained this celestial equator. So obviously it has to make 23 and a half degrees with this great circle which is actually representing the Earth's orbital plane. So now these two great circles are intersecting at these two points. So these two points are called equinoxes. When the sun is at these two points, we can actually see that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. What are those dates? One is March 21st and the other one is September 21st. So the length of the day and the length of the night are equal on these two days which we call as equinoxes. After March 21st, the sun will be moving towards the north, that is apparently moving towards the north and day length actually increases. If the sun is here, the day length is more compared to the night. And when the sun comes here, so this is something like June 21st, the sun is now in its northernmost point. So, on that day, we will have the longest day and the shortest night. That is called as summer solstice. And after this, what happens? The sun gradually moved towards the south. The southward apparent motion of the sun begins from this point. So, as it moves towards south, six months later, it will be somewhere here. So, this is December 21st. So, this is the southernmost point of the sun. What happens when the sun rises at its southernmost point? The day length will be shortest and the night length will be the longest. So, we call this as winter solstice. And after this point, what happens? The sun gradually moves towards north. So, from December 21st onwards, the sun 
keeps shifting towards north in the sky. So this way, as our Earth goes around the Sun with its tilted axis of rotation, we here on the Earth experience that the sunrise point and the sunset point doesn't happen to be due east and due west, but rather it shifts from due east towards north by 23 and a half degrees and towards south by again 23 and a half degrees. Thank you.